we're beginning chapter 5 and we're looking at the um, initially the difference between job order and process costing but the bulk of this chapter is on job order costing this is where most students fall off this is where most lose their way so let's try to go slow uh, through this and see if we can't go step by step let's start with what we're not going to do until next chapter which is process costing and we use process costing when we have a factory or a manufacturing facility that are making many many units of a single product all that comes out of that factory is the same thing over and over and over again so that our cost per unit is easy to figure out we simply take all our manufacturing costs we just total them all up whatever they are and we divide by the total amount of units produced that's it because we only make one thing so if it costs us a million dollars and we make a hundred thousand items each one is ten bucks each simple as that so think about as a good example here think about a coke bottling plant um, when I say bottle I'm talking about plastic bottles now there's no such thing as glass but syrup goes in one way along with water and out come uh, on the other end comes that poison in a plastic bottle and over and over and over and over again job order is different now you still have inputs and outputs but you have multiple outputs so the best way to do this is to look at our manufacturing overhead just one cost never mind direct materials and direct labor we'll get to that but let's look at manufacturing overhead and let's look at what this looks like over the course of a year and you'll start to see the difficulty that job costing implies now the idea behind manufacturing overhead is that these are non-traceable costs so you have rent on your uh, building for the year well how do you know what product it goes to uh, if you're making multiple products you can't trace it to any one product right so let's draw a timeline here on the bottom let's say this represents one year now we make many many different things in this factory so this might be job one up here and it lasts maybe two months then halfway through job one we start job two and that may last two and a half months and job three is a really big job so job three might last uh, eight months out of the entire year but doesn't start till the end of the third month job four we stick up here notice that all these jobs don't last the full year each job has different types of outputs with different quantities each one requires different levels of costs etc so the big question when you have this is at the end of the year all of that manufacturing overhead that you have well how do you apply it to all the units let's say job one produced only one thing a big unit whereas job two produced a whole bunch of small little pieces and produced a million units well you can't apply it per unit now you have to apply it per job but how do you apportion manufacturing overhead to those jobs look at job one is quick job five takes a long time well direct materials direct labor that's easy right those are traceable so we can trace those to the job so if the three manufacturing costs direct material and direct labor can be traced to the job our big problem is what do we do with manufacturing overhead how do we get that into those jobs we can think of furniture manufacturing job one might be sofas job two might be coffee tables job three uh, uh, might be uh, who knows uh, end tables uh, footstools I don't know we can think of law firms every case is different some are quick some take years you can think of vehicle repair I bring mine in I want an oil change you bring yours in you want a new transmission different things right so that's the problem we're gonna try to solve so let's see if we can sort of start looking at how costs flow through a system and when we figure out how they flow through a system it gives us a better idea of how to solve that manufacturing overhead so we'll start with the two really easy ones direct material direct labor and we'll stick manufacturing overhead way over here now the idea behind direct materials and direct labor is they are traceable to the project or to the job that you're working on we can trace direct materials through something called the materials requisition form and this is 
in your computer system, in the computerized accounting system that firms use. There'll be a screen that allows them to enter the materials that are being used on a particular job. So the screen uh, will probably, I'm not drawing a form, I'm just drawing a what the screen might look like here. You might have your job number at the top and then a bunch of lines where you enter in the item that you're taking and there'll be a cost. You enter in the next item number and the computer will generate a cost for what that is and that'll all sum up. Once that's done, once we know what our direct materials are, this form gets added as part of a bigger form called the job cost sheet. So we can track the direct materials. If I take a, a couple of car seats, I know they're going into a particular car. They're traceable to that unit. Direct labor. Well, direct labor, we have the time ticket. Now you may say, but how do you know what job you're working on during the course of the day? I mean, if you start at 7 and you end at uh, 4, what did you work on that day? Well, here's how it works. The employee comes in and there is a barcode that says, I'm starting work start paying me now I'm starting work and they scan this barcode so once they scan the barcode the computer system says well who is scanning this barcode who is scanning it and so the employee grabs his ID badge and scans the barcode on his or her ID badge so the computer says great you're starting you're John Smith what are you gonna work on right now so the employee then takes the barcode scanner and scans the barcode for the particular job that they're going to be working on. So this is a triple barcode scan. You scan to sign in, you scan your badge to say it's me and I'm going to be working on this particular job. So at the end of the day, and I'm just going to do it for one day, what it would look like for Jay Smith, is the computer would record that you started also will record your end time we'll we'll scan out when we're done this video you'll see what that looks like records the amount of time you spent the rate that you get paid the total amount for that period of time and the job number that it applies to so let's just go ahead and fill in a timesheet for a particular day and see what happens and how why we call this a traceable cost now not all of this will be direct watch Let's say we start at 7 and we end at 12. We spend 5 hours. We get paid $15 per hour. They're 75 bucks, and that'll be applied to job 2B47. There we go. So we know that 2B47 had $75 of direct labor. We take a half hour lunch. We come back at 12:30 till 2:30 for 2 hours at $15 an hour, 30 bucks, but this time we worked on job 2B50 cuz we scanned in the computer recognizes the barcodes. Then at 2.30 we scanned out and we scanned into another job. 2.30 to 3.30 we worked one hour at $15. We get, so that's $15 judge. And we just did general maintenance at this point in time. Now look what happens here. Let's add this up. We have eight hours and $120. But this is how it breaks down. Seven of those hours are considered direct labor one of those hours is considered indirect labor because it was for maintenance right it's indirect labor so only seven hours of direct labor so the hundred and twenty breaks down like this seventy five dollars of it will get charged to job two b four seven because it can be traced to that job thirty dollars of it gets charged to job two b five zero because it can be traced to that job and one hour gets charged to manufacturing overhead 15 bucks because it cannot be traced to any one job it's for overhead and then this all of this gets transferred to the job cost sheet so the job cost sheet on a day-to-day -day basis tracks all the cumulative direct material direct labor on that job cost sheet and we're gonna see what we do with manufacturing overhead here that's still a big question mark because most of it is indirect as we've shown with labor that one hour that fifteen dollars for maintenance it can, you can't trace it to any one project but that maintenance might have cleaned up or fixed machines that work on multiple projects right it is non traceable and if you can't trace it to a job you have to assign it as overhead most of the costs in in manufacturing overhead are relatively fixed which means you incur them whether you produce nothing or whether you overproduce for the week you still incur the same costs 
Also, you may pay for something in January, like in, in, in property tax for the year, but you don't record it for the entire year. Remember, cash payments does not equal accrual accounting, does not equal accrual recording. So that sets up a lot of issues with how we apportion manufacturing overhead. So this is uh, uh, how we sign out now. We uh, scan a different barcode that says we're done because we're done with this video. So let's scan this barcode that says we're done. And the computer system will say who is done. I get somebody scanning out, but who is done? And we scan our same badge. We say I'm done. And they say what are you done? And we say we're done this particular job. So that's how we leave a job.